In this video we're going to go through the entire process of hunting an animal for the table. So we're going to go through the bush stalking, the hunting, the disappointment, the success. Woohoo, look at that. The hard work, the butchery, and finally the whole point of it all, feeding our family with good quality, real food. So yeah, my planned hunt for today is I'm going to head into an area where I was a few months ago and I saw a heap of sign in there. This particular area I did see some large prints and also a lot of hind sign and yearling sign. So there's a lot of meat running around in there if, if nothing's changed since I was last there. So I'm hoping nothing's changed. We'll go and find out in a few hours. Sweet, we'll see how we go. Oh man, we got some nice clear prints down in the creek here. This is a point in the creek where they often cross. I usually see prints here, they're not always quite this fresh. But they do look like they've had a little bit of rain on them. You can see. That dew claw there is not really clear. Doesn't look like that. We had rain yesterday, but nothing today, so deer must have crossed here sometime before the last of the rain yesterday. We're going to climb up this side up here, get out of the main creek, and then we're going to head up to a nice benchy area. We'll see how we go stalking through there. If we don't have any luck there, we're going to drop over into another creek. Oh well, I just made my first stuff up. I was just starting to get sort of within three or four hundred meters of where the good hunting spot is. Um, and so I stopped and took my shoes off, put them on my bag, and I literally just stood up and took like two steps. And I bumped like six or seven deer that had been bedded down on the ridge right in front of me. Heaps of beds. You know, heaps of deer here. They've just been sitting up in the sun and the scrub, so they would have been hard to get where they were, but yeah, anyway, all those deer went that way. And my plan now for the afternoon, it's about two or three o'clock, I'm gonna go around this face and drop into this creek which is where I saw a lot of the sign a couple of months ago in this head yard around the corner here see what's around there and 
if that fails, if we don't get any, if we don't get onto anything up there, I'm going to come back down this creek and there's a chance, because we spooked all those deer down that way, we could bump into them again. Oh well, here we are, walking out of the bush, doing the walk of shame, we didn't get anything. <clears throat> so yeah, we're going home empty handed, which is a bit disappointing, but that's hunting. Sometimes it's bloody disappointing, a lot worse than this, so... I won't complain too much yet. I'm going to have another crack tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to hunt the same area but a different different part of it. So we'll be hunting fresh country, fresh animals. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Sweet. can see where the deer have been eating the bark on the side of this tree here it's a bit different to an antler rubbing you can actually see the teeth grooves and they tend to like certain trees this one's a kadamu quite often they seem to come back year after year you can see you can see these chew marks aren't that fresh. The tree's already started healing over. You can see these are marks from previous years where they've eaten the bark and it's grown back. There's a patch there. There's another patch up there. Fresher patch there. Bugger. We missed it. Oh, I thought we were in then. I thought we were going to come home with 
with some meat. Just come over this rise and as you saw there was a yearling and it actually was asleep when we got here um, but another deer down there must have sort of smelt us or seen us because it sort of got up quite quickly after I'd got the camera out and yeah the mistake I made is I had my bow limbs weren't clear and when I let the arrow go I think this bottom limb flew forward and whacked into this punga and then I sort of went like that right at the last minute so the arrow went flying way over the deer so yeah that's that Deer gone now. Yeah, so that's where the yearling was. Bedded down there. And here's our arrow. Clean as a whistle. No blood on there. I could see straight away. <laughs> it was flying way too high. So yeah, bugger. That was a really good opportunity. But we'll just keep trying. Alright, so it's another day and we're having another crack. Yeah, I went to sleep last night. When I closed my eyes, all I could see were deer prints and deer shit and deer bedding areas and just deer sign. Even now when I close my eyes, that's all I see. So yeah, we've certainly been looking at a lot of that over the last couple of days. It's consumed my thoughts so hopefully today's the day we can come home with a bit of blood running down our crack we'll see how we go sweet Oh well, we've got a hind barking at us now. Just sneaking around this face here and and yeah, spotted that hind but she was just a little bit too far away. She was another 10 metres closer, we could have we could have probably got her with the bow but yeah, she was a bit too far away and she had seen us. And now she's barking. Barking and running around. She's running below us, now she's gone above us. She's running above us on the hill. So she's, she's letting all the other deer know that we're here but we're not going to give up yet. 
because I have had success in the past right after deer have been barking so doesn't necessarily mean all the other deer are going to be impossible to hunt. So I just spotted that mob of goats on the steep rocky face here and I can hear a young goat barring away around the face so that's cool, that's good to see heard it again, I don't know if you can hear that so yeah, now all we've got to do is close the gap they're about 200 metres away and we need to bring that down to about 15 metres the wind's pretty good. When I first got here it was going down, so it was still pretty cold and now that things are starting to warm up, it's really still. And yeah, so probably what's going to happen in the next hour or so is as everything warms up, there'll be a little breeze coming up this face. So that's perfect for us because if we want to approach them from the top, hopefully we can get in close anyway. See how we go. Sweet. Oh god, this is just shocking. Basically I got real close to those goats. Um, we chopped down the side here and they weren't actually where we'd last seen them but they just sort of moved further around the face. And we, I found that billy goat sitting in the sun again so I was like, oh sweet. So I cruised over there and I was just sneaking through the bush just about to pop out on top of the slip where he was sleeping. And yeah, fuck, I stood on a pig just about, well I didn't actually stand on it, but it was in the fern sleeping, I didn't even see it, I was too busy focused on sneaking up on the top of the slip. So yeah, it was a boar and he bounced up and ran off, blowing and grunting, crashing through the bush. So then, yeah, that kind of sounded the alarm and then the goats were on to me. They were running, I could hear the rocks rolling on the slip. So I sort of quickly got out there, saw that billy goat, but he was too on edge. He ran away before I could get an arrow away. So, yeah, empty handed once again. 
God, it's almost worse than seeing nothing, seeing all those animals and still getting nothing. That's the thing with the bow, you know, I could have easily shot those goats with a gun, but no chance with the bow at all. Everything needs to be perfect. You need to have the element of surprise on the animal. You need to have a clear view, clear shot. You need to be within range. And the animal can't have seen you yet. Pretty much if they've seen you, you're wasting your time. Just trying to practice a few quick shots. So we're back in the same area that we were when we did our first hunt at the start of the video. I just came up the creek this morning, just on first light, and I came to a side creek and I could smell deer really, really strongly. And I could see where the deer had crossed. So I've headed up this catchment here, followed the prints across the main creek and up this face. I thought I was gonna bump into the deer a bit sooner but I haven't seen anything yet. But I have heard some crashing quite a bit further around the face on the other side. So that's the other side over there. So I'm assuming the deer are over there somewhere. So I'm just gonna keep sneaking along this side that I'm on, see if I can get eyes on the deer over there because there's a lot of slips on that face. So I'm hoping I'll be able to see them and then maybe sort out a stalk from there. Well, we've only got two arrows left in our quiver. We usually have three, so you know what that means. I was just sneaking along this face here, and coming along this, this deer track, it hasn't got a lot of fresh prints on it. I was just coming along, and I heard a stick crack, and then a deer just popped its head over the spur right through that gap over there and it was coming along this track. Hadn't seen us yet, but it was that close and it was looking straight towards us. I didn't have time to turn the GoPro on, I just knocked an arrow and then looked up and pulled the string back. And by the time I'd done that, her ears had perked up and she was looking straight at us and I just let the arrow go. And she just jumped and just went straight down the hill here pretty steep little face so I don't know for sure if she's down but I heard a crash and then silence which is what you want to hear you definitely don't want to be hearing crashing into the distance so either she stopped and she snuck off but I did see exactly where that arrow went it was right in the chest area, so I don't think she's gone anywhere. I think she pretty much died right then and there and just rolled down the hill. But I'll give it a minute just in case. We'll sit down, have a little, have a little rest, and then we'll go and see if we can find our animal. Sweet, man. She was standing about here when we shot her. You can clearly see the roll path down here.
lots of here. Holy heck, I can see already. That's the, that's the deer there. Looks dead as. We're about halfway between the dead deer and where we shot the deer. We can see both from here. So man, that is a quick kill. I'm wrapped with that. I mean, that's as good as, as quick and humane of a kill as you could hope for, whether you're hunting with a rifle or a bow. There's our arrow hole. Don't know if the arrow is on yet. There's an arrow still in it. Oh, it's snapped off. Man, am I relieved that we finally managed to make it happen. But the work's not over yet. We've still got to carry this thing out of the bush and yeah, make the most of it. So we'll get to work. Sweet. Someone said to me a while ago, oh man, you're wasting the best part. The best part's the intestines and the gut bag and I thought yeah you're right I am wasting it so we don't waste it anymore gonna make use of everything we can and it's never too late to start learning new stuff so we're taking the gut contents out of here and if you know what the deer's been eating, you can eat its gut contents. But I do know that the deer in this area do t seem to be eating a bit of toot, which is highly poisonous to people. So I'm not going to eat the, the contents, but we're going to take the, the gut lining home, give it a wash in the creek on our way out. Just gonna have a quick snack before we get on to the carry. A couple of eyeballs. Just a bit of fat from behind the eyes. And the tongue, we just cooked it up on the fire. This is probably my favorite part on a hind anyway, to eat first at the moment.
man that's good that's so good oh it's good that we're having a sit down and a feed at the moment because it's still a fair way to get out of the bush from here so it's going to be a hard carry hard work carrying that animal out it's a pretty good size animal only about a few hundred meters to get down to the main creek but then it's probably a good couple of hours to get out from there with that load on our back so Bit of peppermint spray to keep the flies away. Sweet. Oh, I'm gonna go wash the blood out of my crack now. It's been a good day. Sweet. Sweet. So we're just gonna leave this deer hanging up for the next two or three days. Let the meat break down a little bit. So our steak's nice and tender. It's quite a good size animal. There's weeks and weeks and weeks worth of meals for our little family and, and this animal. I mean just starting from the bottom here we'll get a couple of meals worth of shanks off the front legs. We'll get two or three slow cooked meals off the neck, cutting it that way, cooking it in the slow cooker, putting some tomatoes and onions with it and then just slowly cooking it all day. Maybe a bit of cheap red wine in there too few mixed herbs it'll just all break down and it gets really nice and jellyified and delicious and then we've got the meaty part of the front shoulder most of that will go into mince or ground ground meat as some of you guys call it overseas so we can make pies and bolognese, lasagna and then inside of here obviously we've already removed the organ meat so we've got the heart and the liver and all that stuff, the kidneys I just like to fry those up with a bit of butter and garlic and some herbs and, and some onions and they just taste, they're wicked, they're good to eat nice and fresh and then yeah depending on how fat the deer is when we get it skinned we'll either keep the ribs together so we can slow cook them if there's not much fat on it then I'll probably just take the meat off the ribs and mince it up 
then we've got our tripe that we've already taken out the the gut bag Got our beautiful back steaks all along here, the prime cuts, the eye fillets that run up the inside of the backbone there. We'll fry those up whole and then put some seasoning on them, a bit of butter, put them in the oven, cook them so that they're just nice and pink on the inside. Oh, beautiful. Just a quick ad break guys. So if you'd like to learn how to do this sort of thing yourself, but you don't know where to get started, then you might be interested in the Keeping It Wild course. So what that is, is a course that we've made and we go through everything you need to know from what gear you should buy, what gear that costs a lot of money that you probably don't need to buy, how to find places to go hunting on public land that's not gonna cost you any money, how to navigate around in the bush so that you don't get lost. We go through how to bush stalk animals, how to read sign, how to choose a hunting tool, breaking down an animal in the field, packing it out of the bush, and breaking it down further to put it in your freezer, what meals to make with it, all that type of thing, plus a heap of other bush skills, fire lighting in the rain, things like that, what to do in an emergency what plants you can eat in the bush and what other uses they have plus a whole heap of other videos similar to the one you're watching right now so yeah if you're interested in that it costs eleven dollars New Zealand a month and you can cancel anytime you like so yeah I'll leave the link in the description of this video in case you want to check that out back to the video cheers and then we got the back legs, which is where most of the meat is on a deer like this. You can see there's a bit of fat in there, which is awesome. There's some real nice prime steak cuts in the back leg. You can cook either whole, same way that we do the eye fillets, or you can slice them up thinner, put them in something like a stir fry, or even have them raw, venison tartare, dip them in a bit of sauce or something, or even dice it up, mix in some, some fresh vegetables, capsicum, cucumber, stuff like that, and have a nice fresh, fresh meal. You could even use it as a dip for some corn chips or something like that. Sweet. Anyway, that's mission accomplished, so that's about the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. We saw a lot of animals and covered a heck of a lot of country. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks heaps for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.